everyone. When you first home a greyhound, the chances are you'll be advised to walk them twice a day, perhaps for 20 or 30 minutes, and that's a good starting point. It can be sensible to stay local so the dog becomes familiar with the area. And if they're particularly nervous, you might want to wait a few days before you take them out at all, allowing them to settle before they have that additional new experience. Over time, you can build up their fitness and they may get used to having longer walks with you. It's a very individual thing, depends on you and on your dog. Some dogs may ultimately be able to be let off lead, but if you do decide to let them off, make sure that you have a good recall in place before you do that. And you might want to make sure they wear their muzzle just in case there are any issues that you can't anticipate. If it's not practical for the dog to go off in public, then there's always the option of hiring a secure field to let them run in. And I do think with greyhounds, having a greyhound that can be allowed off lead is something of a privilege rather than something to be expected. Of course, if you're walking in the countryside, you may find obstacles there that you need to be careful of. So they don't always do very well with styles of a variety of types. I would typically look for a route that follows bridal paths or an open route such as a green lane, rather than risk having to carry my dog over multiple styles in the course of a walk. Lead handling is going to be important wherever you walk your dog. Your greyhound can do 0 to 40 in just a few strides. So if they spook and get away from you, they can go a long way before they stop running and could come to some harm in that time. Do check your kit regularly for any defects to make sure that nothing's going to snap and no stitching has come undone. And let's have a look at some tips for lead handling whilst you're on your walks. So thinking about the security of your dog while you're out on a walk, it's always sensible to put this loop at the end of the lead around your wrist and then hold at that end. And this hand has got the lead securely. So if they pull, they're not going to pull that out of your hand. And then the other hand can control the length. So here my left hand is holding so that she's on a shorter lead. If I wanted to have space to sniff, then of course I can just have this other hand closer together. If you've got your dog on a double-ended lead, you have a couple of options. So I'm going to just pop this double-ended lead on her now. So of course, with this lead, we haven't got a handle in the middle. Now, what you can do to keep that safe is again, to put it through your wrist and hold close. Your other option would be to buy a very, very short lead. This is called a lead, but it is little more than a handle. And then that can click to this ring in the center of the longer lead. Most of them have a ring in the middle. And again, I can put my hand through the loop hold on and now she's held securely but I have the benefit of the two points of attachment on the harness as well. So it's never recommended that you walk your greyhound with an extending lead. There is a danger with this that the dog being able to do 0 to 40 in about three strides could suddenly disappear. If you're not expecting it they may pull the lead out of your hand. If they are if you are expecting it they may still reach the end of the lead and suddenly bang to a stop, which could be quite dangerous for their neck. I didn't want to risk demonstrating this with one of my own dogs. So this is our pretend greyhound, shrunk rather, and he's gonna run. And just that lead bouncing along the ground behind him could be frightening cause the dog to run and escape and possibly hurt themselves getting run over or something equally awful. So please, please consider carefully before you put a greyhound on an extending lead. So if we're going to need to pick up some poo at some point on the walk, which invariably happens, we want to make sure the dog isn't going to get away from us at that time. So the first thing I do is always have a good check around to see there's no little fluffy dogs, no squirrels, no cats before I bend down to pick up the poo, else you could end up sitting down rather more suddenly than you intended. We don't want to pick up the poo with the hand that's securely attached to the lead because else when you reach down, there's a risk it's going to fall off. 
okay so i tend to have the lead round one wrist i'm holding on firmly there i have my poo bag here and two poo bags here and then having checked that the coast is clear coast clear maybe i can reach down pick up my poo fake poo bag it up and i haven't risked losing my dog at the same time and there we go off to the nearest poo bin i hope you found that helpful it can be quite a lot to cope with at first juggling the lead making sure you have control but the dog has enough space to enjoy the walk and of course managing poo bags at the same time i hope you have many years of enjoyable walking with your new friend i'll be back again soon with more videos bye for now Look out for new videos every Monday and why not subscribe so you don't miss out.